Welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about what are the most micronutrient dense foods. And the reason I want to talk about this is because there are a lot of misconceptions about nutrient dense foods and foods that we should eat um, for proper um, nutrient absorption, micronutrient absorption um, in our diets. And I think uh, this article that we're going to discuss is going to be really eye opening for a lot of people. Um, and maybe the reasons why if you're not eating these certain foods, you should start or you need to be taking a multivitamin or a specific micronutrient multivitamin to improve that. Um, so we'll get right into the paper and we'll kind of discuss what the most nutrient dense foods are. Um, so here is the paper. It is called Priority Micronutrient Density in Foods by Ty Beal and Flaminia Ortenizi. Um, it is from March, 2022. Uh, so a relatively new paper. Um, it's in the frontiers of nutrition there as, uh, as the journal. So background, um, Despite concerted efforts to improve diet quality and reduce malnutrition, micronutrient deficiencies remain widespread globally, especially in the low and middle income countries um, and among population groups with increased needs. Those population groups might be the elderly, might be children between like two and four. Um, and then we know that women of childbearing age or women of reproductive age as well um, need, or and pregnant women uh, all need more micronutrient density. <clears throat> um, so diets are often inadequate in iron, zinc, folate, vitamin A, calcium, and vitamin B2, B12. So iron and zinc are micro minerals, right? Uh, are minerals. Then folate is vitamin B. It's a type of vitamin B. Vitamin A specifically retinol. Um, calcium is also a mineral, and then vitamin B12. Okay. Um, we can discuss which each ones of these are maybe for. Uh, we'll do that real quickly. So iron we know is important in the blood. Um, it helps to, it goes down to red blood cells and it helps to bind oxygen. And so if we're iron deficient, iron deficiency anemia can lead to lack of red blood cells delivering oxygen to our tissues, like our brain, our body, our uh, muscles, joints, all those things. Uh, so we need a lot of iron. Uh, people that are most susceptible to iron deficiency are ones that don't eat iron rich foods, which we'll talk about, but also um, those that are women of childbearing age due to just periods losing blood, um, especially those that have heavy periods. Okay, zinc. Zinc is a mineral as well. It's really important for the immune system. That's one of the most common uh, things that we know that it's, that it's uh, important for um, because it has to it actually forms these like zinc fingers that um, basically bind molecules to help vitamin A do its work, do its job uh, when it comes to activating the immune system, specifically activating specific branches of the immune system like the innate immune system. Um, folate. Folate is also really important for anemia, for basically making red blood cells. It helps to specifically make DNA. And so if we make DNA, we need DNA to put into our cells. And so if um, our red blood cells only last 90 days, so if we're not eating enough folate, um, then we're not making enough DNA to put into our cells to replenish those, those red blood cells. So that's why folate can cause a, a type of anemia as well. Uh, vitamin A, as I alluded to with zinc, vitamin A is really important, especially retinol. It's important for the eyes, um, but it's also really important for the immune system. Calcium, we know, is good for the bones. That's where most of calcium is stored. And if we have a really good calcium homeostasis in our body, so calcium um, is in our bloodstream, it's outside of cells. And what it does is when it enters cells, then it can activate things. So in muscles, we need calcium to enter the muscle to cause contraction. Uh, in the brain, we need calcium to enter the neuron to improve uh, brain neuroplasticity, to basically activate the, the, the neuron or the nerve cell to signal. And so if calcium's not at an adequate level, then the 
bones are going to lose calcium and to supply the blood so that we can have uh, good muscle contraction, good brain and neural firing. And eventually we get to a point where we might have osteoporosis or basically um, calcium has been lost from the bones so much that the bones aren't strong and that leads to fractures and other things. And lastly, vitamin B12, it's really only used for a couple things. One of them is again, making red blood cells or making DNA for blood cells. Another one is uh, getting rid of homocysteine. So there's this uh, methylation cycle that happens to improve DNA repair uh, and recovery. Well, homocysteine is a byproduct and we can restore, we can take away homocysteine, restore uh, methylation with vitamin B12. Okay, so we know these micronutrients and their bioavailability across diverse food, foods and the suitability of these foods to help meet requirements for the population, okay? Um, basically the objective was to efforts to reduce micronutrient malnutrition among various populations globally. Um, so the methods they recommended uh, nutrient intakes for five population groups. Again, these were children like two to four, women with reproductive age, women that are pregnant, um, the elderly, and then just adults over 25. Um, the approaches to rate foods based on their density in all priority micronutrients for various populations and different nutrient requirements. So I want to be clear that how they rated them was rated not only on the nutrient density of the, of the, in, um, of the food, but also the bioavailability. So I'll explain more about that in a sec, but bioavailability means like how much can our body actually extract of those nutrients from the plants or from the meat or from the food, and then therefore get into our bloodstream to use it. Okay, so the results, here you go. They found the top sources of priority micronutrients are in organs, so organ meats, small fish, dark leafy vegetables, dark green leafy vegetables, uh, bivalves or clams, crustaceans, goat, beef, eggs, milk, canned fish with bones, mutton, and lamb. Okay, so a lot of animal products with some dark leafy greens. And then cheese, goat milk, and pork were also good sources. The lesser extent of like yogurt, fresh fish, pulses. Pulses are like legumes, so uh, beans and other things like that. Uh, teff, and then canned fish without bones. Okay, so they basically want to say we want to prioritize these to reduce micronutrient gaps of these main micronutrients that were discussed above. So we're going to go right into the first table here. Well, maybe not the first table. These are just uh, requirements for the couple age groups. Again, children two to four, um, adolescents, women, pregnant women, and adults. I'm sorry, I thought elderly was on here. I was wrong. Uh, it was adolescence. And so these are calorie requirements versus then requirements of um, of these different minerals and vitamins, okay? Uh, I'll explain this 20%, 15, and then the unrefined and refined here in a sec. Okay, so here's the global composition database. Okay, so let's start with um, looking at phytates, okay? so. There are certain foods that can contain a lot of phytates, all of them being plant foods. Most of these, so you can see the higher amounts of phytates are, there's, it's this phytic acid, it's this molecule that basically binds to certain 2 pos cations, 2 pos minerals like zinc and prevent absorption. So what they did was if they had a certain, if there's um, foods that had a certain amount of phytates, they basically assumed the absorption was going to be only 26%. So pulses or legumes, whole grains, uh, sorghum, millet, teff, quinoa had a lot, nuts and seeds all had a lot. And so 26% was the absorption rate that was assumed based on this phytate. I'm not sure if that's really correct because some of these that are really high could even have less absorption of zinc. Okay, um, then Dark leafy greens was very minimal in phytates, so they have a high absorption rate, 44%. And then basically all of these are all 44% because they don't have phytates because they're all animal products, okay? If we look at iron absorption, iron absorption, we have two types of iron. We have heme iron. Heme iron comes from animal sources. Um, and heme iron is what is our body uses, heme iron in the blood to bind to that oxygen. And so 
then we have other sources of iron, which is going to be like ferric form of iron or ferrous form. It's just whether it has an extra um, electron or not. And those are not as well absorbed and as well utilized. So iron absorption for, for plants are going to be 10%, while iron absorption for most animal products, they talk about as 20%, okay? Um, but then they have some at 15, which are more gonna be like eggs and dairy. Um, and they have organs as well as some fish at that, which I think is a little bit interesting. Uh, just because organs are definitely going to have heme iron, especially spleen uh, right here. So I'm a little confused by that. Uh, they really only put beef, goat, and lamb as those like high red meats as 20%. So again, a little confused. Uh, again, not a perfect study, but I think it. I really like that they're going through this nutrient density with bioavailability, which is really important. Um, so then what it has is, you know, how many calories are for 100 grams of each one of these things, and then how much of the vitamins they have, okay? So um, I real quick just wanted to highlight like liver, so beef liver and lamb liver for how high these nutrients are compared to dark leafy greens, even though dark leafy greens are do have a decent amount of these nutrients. Um, of course, dark leafy greens do not have any vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is only found in animal products. That's why right, there's zero in the non-animal sources, right? Um, real quick, I can even show you that chicken, which people think chicken is like the healthier, cleaner meat, is not very nutrient dense compared to some of these other meats like beef. Beef has way more B12 than chicken. Uh, beef is gonna have way more vitamin A than chicken. It's gonna have way more um, zinc and iron. So zinc right there, iron there versus those two, okay? So I wanna just highlight them. Okay, so let's go to, so they have a bunch of these graphs, which I really like. And so, um, or a bunch of tables, graphs, yeah, they're graphs. Okay, so these are, if we look at the bottom of the page, calories and grams needed to provide an average of one third of recommended intakes of all of these vitamins, vitamin A, folate, vitamin B12, calcium, iron, zinc, um, for women of reproductive age, okay? And so what is the most nutrient dense ones? Again, these are, this is in calories or kilocalories versus grams, okay? So if you have 11 calories of liver, that supplies you with um, the enough requirements um, for your daily value of of all those things, vitamin A, zinc, iron, all those things. Spleen, you have 62 calories of spleen. Small dried fish, 65 calories. Uh, dark leafy greens, you need to get up to 72 calories. But 72 calories of dark leafy greens is 239 grams. So 200, that 239 grams, that's like a huge helping, right? It's a, it's a lot of fiber, it's a lot of like excess things, which are gonna help fill you up, but also, um, it might not give you enough protein, which we know that protein is also a good source um, or a good nutrient that's not a micronutrient as we're talking about here. So basically, if we look at the top, all the ones that are very high nutrient dense, okay, with it, or green, are gonna be all animal products, okay, except for the dark leafy greens. And the, the way they looked at this nutrient density, very high, high, moderate, low, is based on how much the average requirement is there. So basically, um, the all the green ones, the were basically one less than one third uh, the average requirement for calories and average requirement for um, for grams, the amount of uh, yeah grams, while like. Uh, for that individual, for the for the reproductive women of reproductive age, but for instance, vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables, even though it, it you need 297 calories there, that takes 746 grams. So that's just a, that's just way you know it's so much uh, fruit, so much vegetable that like how can somebody actually get all that in a day? 
uh, which is why they consider it a low amount because it's over one third of the average requirement. Okay. Um, so you look at how nutrient dense these organs and small dried fish are, um, beef even, eggs, uh, compared to things that are generally recommended for people, like quinoa, this like great superfood, right? Um, seeds, even chicken being this cleaner meat, 1103. Um, obviously unrefined grain products. We don't really want unrefined grain products, but that's there. Refined grain products, it's even worse, right? Uh, even whole grains and nuts, which we're supposed to be getting all these whole grains and nuts. I don't think those are necessarily the best things. Roots, tubers, and plantains. So roots would be like sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes, but they're not the most nutrient dense things. Um, I am going to get more of my nutrient density, more of my um, micronutrients from all of the uh, organs that I eat and like the liver, the kidney. Um, I'm not a big fan of spleen, so I'm sorry if anybody likes spleen, but I'm just not a big fan. Um, I love eggs, I love beef, I love, uh, I do eat chicken, even though it's not the most nutrient dense, but I'm gonna get more of my nutrient density from these foods that are up higher on this list, okay? And so basically they have in this, um, they have other things here, so like how liver is very high in all of these like overall density versus very high in all these things except calcium versus like dark leafy greens. It's just high in iron, it's low in zinc, it's low in vitamin B12, but it's very high in other things. Um, you see that liver is definitely probably the best. Small dried fish is actually pretty good. Um, and then you have other ones that are much worse here, okay? Um, so again, we can look at beef, very high in, in many, low in others, uh, while chicken, chicken right down here, just high in a couple, very low in others. Chicken is not that nutritious, right? Uh, it's a good source of protein, but not that nutritious. And they just have, a, you know, again, more of these tables that are referencing for, uh, this was specifically iron intake for women of reproductive age. And so for iron intake, again, the best are gonna be uh, spleen, liver, kidney, those organs, okay? Um, this one is specifically adults over 25 for all those other micronutrients. Okay, so a bunch of these tables in this graph or in this, uh, in this section that I think can be really beneficial if you're interested in looking at the article online. It does have free access. Um, so I know this was a long one and it's kind of, uh, it, is, it is one of my passions is, is diet and nutrition and what is nutrient dense for people. Um, and a little aside here is that our soils are not very nutrient dense as they were 20, 30 years ago because a lot of the monocrop agriculture that we do causes the soil's water to be depleted and therefore uh, there's a lot of soil runoff. And that soil runoff prevents the amount of carbon uh, and then other minerals like zinc, uh, folate, iron, all those things to be, become depleted as well. And therefore the plants we're trying to grow on them are not going to be as nutrient dense. Um, and then of course the grasses that are there are not as nutrient dense. And so when animals eat grass that are on a wild pasture that we aren't monocropping agriculture or we aren't mono uh, putting just one crop on a specific thing like corn or soy, where the grasses and the soils are able to regenerate and therefore and of course the cows or the cattle or any other animal are going to poop on the land and then replenish some of that soil and that is going to give you the most nutrient dense products to eat animal sources and so um, i personally think that every human needs to eat some variety of animal source foods um, of course some more than others and it really kind of depends on uh, your genetics, your blood type, uh, your body type, your energy levels, all those things. So um, personally, um, please take this, uh, take this article to heart. If you don't want to eat any animal products, you probably need a micronutrient, um, uh, sorry, a multivitamin that has micronutrients and uh, multiminerals, okay? So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.